Ms. Thomason, we can begin. All right. Uh, thank you and welcome to the June 17th meeting of the TDHCA Audit and Finance Committee. Um, apologize for my camera not working this morning, but I will begin by taking roll. Um, Mr. Braden? Here. Okay, present. Okay, Mr. Thomas? Present. Uh, Mr. Vasquez? Present. And I am here, so we have a quorum. Um, we have a, a first action item today on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the March 11th, 2021 meeting of the Audit and Finance Committee. At that meeting, Robert Pagenkoff from the State Auditor's Office presented the um, SAO's annual audits of the TDHCA financial statements. All of those reports resulted in an unqualified or a clean opinion. Um, also, the Director of Internal Audit, Mr. Mark Scott, presented the internal audit of the continuity of the operation or the COOP. He also provided status updates on the internal and external audit activities at that time. Uh, the minutes are included in your um, book, and I just need to ask for a motion to approve the minutes from the March 11, 2021 um, Audit and Finance Committee meeting. Move to approve. Okay, move to approve by Mr. Braden. May I have a second? Second. Second. Um, all in favor of approving those minutes? Aye. 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 Thank you. And um, the minutes are approved. Our second action item is the presentation, discussion, and possible action to approve the fiscal year 2022 operating budget. And we have um, Mr. Joe Guevara with us today to, um, he's the Director of Financial Administration and he's gonna present that item to us. Good morning, Mr. Guevara. Good morning, can you hear me clearly? Yes, sir. Perfect, perfect. perfect. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, uh, members of the committee. Uh, for the record, I am Joe Guevara, Director of Financial Administration. Uh, over the past several months, our budget team has been in collaboration with division directors and managers to develop uh, an internal operating budget for fiscal year 2022. Uh, this budget is within the spending limits in Senate Bill 1 of the 87th Texas Legislature regular session, which will become the General Appropriations Act for the 2022-23 biennium. Uh, we developed this budget to address various needs that were included in our legislative, legislative appropriation request, which allows for some planned growth in personnel and technology. Uh, in addition, this budget outlines temporary growth to support programs created in response to the coronavirus pandemic funded through the CARES Act, the Consolidated, uh, Consolidated Appropriation Act, and the recent American Rescue Plan Act, and have charged our agency to administer more than $3.9 billion over the next few years. Um, behind item number two is the internal operating budget, which includes a comparison report. Uh, we have reformatted this report to provide you a comparison for each year as a whole along with an adjusted report, excluding temporary funding and the capital budget, which we believe provides you a more transparent comparison, comparison for our core operations. In summary, uh, the 2022 proposed budget is $106 million. Uh, this represents a $77.2 million increase. Uh, the structure of this budget can be divided into three components, uh, temporary funding, our ongoing permanent activities, and the capital budget. Uh, first, uh, the budget expenditures related to temporary programs account for approximately $76.3 million of, of this increase. Uh, this temporary administrative funding will be utilized for expenditures related to personnel, outsourced professional services, and general administrative expenses. Uh, this budget proposes to fund 53 Article 9 temporary FTEs, uh, 15 to assist in the administration of programs related to the CARES Act, 14 related to the Texas Rent Relief Program and 15 related to the American Rescue Plan Act. Additionally, we budgeted for nine temporary FTEs in the areas of accounting, HR, IT, and procurement. Um, in addition, outsourced professional services for the administration of the Texas Rent Relief Program primarily accounts for the variance in the professional services line item of the budget. Uh, we also budgeted $1.3 million for temporary help primarily for personnel to support uh, short-term tasks and projects related to CDBG and the rent relief program as they evolve. 
Um, it, it, this also includes some funds budgeted for translation services for these two programs. Uh, secondly, the, the change related to our ongoing uh, activities was an increase of $310,000 or 1.1%. The adjusted variance column in the comparison report lists the changes in these categories and the impact of the budget compared to FY21. Uh, uh, some barriers to highlight related to our core programs are as follows. Uh, salaries increased uh, 273,000 or 1.5%, primarily due to the funding of FTEs uh, to support the increase in multifamily activities and external affairs uh, with payroll related costs increasing proportionately. Uh, professional fees decreased uh, 258,000, uh, primarily related to the completion of a contract for cost allocation training and the reallocation of our external audit services from our core grants to the rent relief program for this upcoming fiscal year. Uh, another item is repairs and maintenance increased uh, nearly 19,000 or 3.2%, uh, primarily due to a planned upgrade of our MIDAS system, uh, which supports our loan servicing and bond accounting functions, allowing for improved customer service and to our borrowers. Uh, rentals and leases increased 42,000, primarily due to a lease agreement uh, for office space at the Twin Towers location. Um, advertising costs uh, increased 50,000 in anticipation of an advertising and outreach campaign for the LIHEAP program. Uh, and lastly, uh, communication and utilities increased 158,000, primarily due to an increase in agency-wide need of additional technological resources, such as DocuSign and eNotary, and the media contract for the Texas Home Ownership Program. Uh, the last component of our budget is related to our capital projects, uh, which increased 557,000. Uh, professional services related to the capital budget increased 445,000, uh, primarily mostly related to the upgrade of our compliance monitoring and tracking system. This is going to moder modernize this system and, and, and allow for some efficiencies. Um, uh, furniture and equipment is the non-capital component of the capital budget, and it increased 149,000, reflective of more scheduled purchase of equipment such as computers and printers, uh, the majority of which will occur in, in this first year of the biennium. Um, the capital outlay is the capital component of the capital budget, and it increased uh, 119,000, it decreased, I'm sorry, it decreased 119,000, reflective of a of planned purchases uh, such as servicers, servers and other major uh, hardware, which are scheduled to, during the second year of the biennium. Um, this budget is reflective of 366 FTEs, uh, 53 being Article 9 temporary FTEs and 313 uh, being CAP FTEs. Of the CAP FTEs, 249 are related to TDHCA and 64 are Manufactured Housing Division staff. Um, and finally, a brief overview of the impact of our method of finance uh, is as follows. Uh, general revenue as a whole decreased 224,000. Uh, this is primarily related to the state mandated 5% reduction uh, for the 2021 biennium. Uh, property receipts had an increase of 422,000, prim primarily related to additional FTEs uh, funded with uh, these fees and uh, supplement to the general revenue reduction. Um, at this time, also, I would like to note that for the record, in accordance with the internal auditing standards and the board's uh, internal audit charter, uh, this budget includes the internal audit division's annual operating budget as well. Uh, this concludes my remarks this, on this item, and I'm available for any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. Um, are there any questions from any of the committee members on this item? Uh, I have one question. Okay, Mr. Braden. Uh, I'll say, I, I think you talked about, um, when you do explain why the rentals and leases increased, you referred to the Twin Towers. Yes, what, until, what is that? Uh, it, it's a separate building. Uh, it, it's a, uh, along 290, and it's, it primarily houses right now IIT staff. And uh, when the pandemic hit, we were it, it, the lease was expiring, and we were going to bring our IT staff back into headquarters. Uh, but then we were bringing in uh, we were bringing a lot more temporary staff, and so we decided to keep our IT staff over there. Uh, in, in the meantime, to be allowed for the growth in our personnel. Uh, so it's a temporary, you know, extension of the lease going for the at least for the next three years or so. Okay, thank you. Joe, does that amount include the manufactured housing division's lease, or is it just for our? Um, it's, just, it's just our portion. It's just our portion. Eventually, the uh, their their manufactured housing division is going to get a spot in the new H. W. Bush building that they're building. Uh, you know, on the 
phase one of the capital complex expansion. We're going to be staying here at least for another phase or two, and uh, we'll, we'll be bringing back those IT folks with us. I don't think they're going to migrate to the H.W. Bush building with uh, manufactured housing. <clears throat> Are there any other questions? I have a question. So, Joe, would you characterize that, just in summary, characterizing that our core budget has stayed basically flat? I mean, the, the, and the increases are due to additional programmatic needs, correct? Yes, exactly. Our, our, our budget remained fairly consistent, fairly flat, plan some plan growth in, in personnel and technology. And the majority of our increase, you know, 268%, that, that was all is primarily related to our, our temporary programs will be phased out as these grants are spent down in the next, you know, couple of years. Right, okay, great, thanks. Okay, are there any other questions? Okay, hearing none, um, may I ask for a motion to recommend approval to the full board um, of the uh, fiscal year 2022 operating budget as presented? Anyone? Move to approve. Madam Chair, I move that we um, approve the budget as presented by staff to the full board um, for review and approval. Okay, thank you, Mr. Thomas. And Mr. Braden, was that a second? Second. Perfect, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. We'll move on to action item number three. Uh, that is the presentation, discussion, and possible action on the fiscal year 2022 housing finance division budget and mr guevara will present that to us as well thank you madam chair uh now i'd like to turn your attention to item number three the housing finance budget uh this particular item is a subset of our internal operating budget it is in relation to the housing finance budget that we are required to submit under our texas government code and in compliance with the uh, general appropriations act uh, this subset of the, of the budget is specific to the fees that we generate through single family and multifamily bond tax credit and compliance activities. Uh, and so at this time, we are prepared to certify this budget as well. Uh, so I'm available for any questions you may have related to this. Time. Thank you. Are there um, any questions related to this budget? Okay. Hearing okay, well, that. I'm, I'm sorry. Just, just I have another the related question i mean so are we staying consistent based on our on the projects that we have underway yeah, yes the majority of the growth in, in the property receipts or the housing finance budget is related to our capital but capital projects uh um, for the upgrade of cmts like i mentioned earlier and some additional um fts for some uh, multifamily activity needs so but it's it's pretty consistent Right. Okay. All right. That's it. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. If there are none, may I have a motion to recommend approval to the full board of the fiscal year 2022 housing finance division budget? So moved. Okay. Mr. Braden, and is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Vasquez. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, uh, that concludes our action items. Thank you very much, Mr. Guevara, for presenting those items to us. Thank you. Um, now we will have three report items. Uh, the first will be the internal audit of the tenant selection criteria and affirmative marketing plans. And uh, Mr. Scott, the director of internal audit, is here to present that item today. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this function was recently transferred from uh, TVHCA Compliance Monitoring Division to the Fair Housing Data Management and Reporting Division. And there had been concern that Compliance Division would be flooded with a lot more IRS regulations to monitor. And also in the past, most of the Compliance Monitoring referrals to the Enforcement Committee were resolved through more training. Since May 2020, the transfer of these functions to FHDMR division, um, the TDHCA staff have provided training and technical assistance to property 
owners and their representatives for meeting the requirements of the Fair Housing Act. The staff have also offered voluntary reviews of the plans to properties funded through TDHCA. Um, internal audit reviewed 10 out of 50 voluntary reviews that were performed by the staff as of the start of the audit. We made some recommendations for improvement in record keeping and consistency of reviews. We've also noted that we'll be performing additional testing during our follow-up audit next year. Um, the additional testing will be focused on the areas that were still in transition phase and were not tested during our current audit. Additionally, um, we reviewed records of complaints related to fair housing that were received either through TWC or were directly submitted to TDH. And overall, we found that the division is providing clear and adequate support and training to the property owners and their representatives. And so I'll be happy to answer any questions on that audit. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Are there any questions related to that report? Okay, the next report item then will be the internal audit of the non-performing loans at TDHCA. Uh, Mr. Scott will be presenting that report as well. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we reviewed non-performing loans to determine where delinquencies may exist and how they are managed, how they are reported, and how TDHCA makes allowance for losses related to loan default. We reviewed two types of loans, bond funded and direct loans. Bond funded loans financed from single family and multi-family review revenue bonds are originated and managed by external parties. These external parties, which may include banks, services, and trustees, are accountable through legal agreements that are monitored by TDHCA. With these structures, the department has innovatively used tools available from the federal government and financial institutions to provide a market for the creation and preservation of affordable housing while minimizing default. The direct loans are made from both federal and state general revenue funds allocated to the agency. The performance of these loans is managed directly by TDHCA or through partnerships with Habitat for Humanity. Single family loans had the most delinquent accounts 83% were current, 17% were delinquent as of 2-28-21. This was somewhat expected given that TDHCA is often viewed as a lender of last resort. So these types of loans carry more delinquency risk than your average conventional loans. Multifamily loans were 87% current, 13% delinquent as of 2-28-21. The percentage of loans that were more than a year delinquent was negligible. Uh, based on our reviews, OIA found that the function of the management of non-performing loans is performing effectively overall with some suggestions for consistency and efficiency. We had a recommendation for a dashboard for the agency as a tool for viewing status of loan delinquencies. We also had recommendations for going forward as more activities are automated with the MIDAS software system. This includes some of the manual work done for payment receipts, which we did review. Um, bond total versus direct loans in general terms based on, uh, as of the end of our report, we had 1.9 billion in, in bonds and 753 million in direct loans, um, or 1.9 billion in bond back loans. Um, the loan loss allowance is $10 million um, for the $753 million loans in loans, which is 1.33%. And this is very low allowance, but it's borne out by prior history. So overall, um, they're doing a very good job with the uh, management of the non-performing loans. So I'll be happy to answer any questions on that audit. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Um, does anyone have any questions for Mr. Scott related to this report item? Okay. Yeah, again, just a question on, do we have any statistics how this portfolio performs relative to other similar states or organizations? Um, I, Susie's on the line. Um, I, I don't think we compared it. I think um, 
they they seem manifestly like they were doing a good job. But Susie, are you on the line? Maybe she said, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know. Joe, do you know anything about that as far as comparisons to other states? Uh, yeah. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mr. Vasquez. Uh, yeah, we don't have any statistic comparing, not, not that I'm aware of, uh, but but our process just evaluating, you know, our, our delinquencies with our own portfolio. And, and, and it, it's every year it's also reviewed by our external auditors to make sure it's reasonable. Um, and at this point, the experience in write-offs does not exceed our allowance the following year. So it, it seems right in line with, with, our, with our estimates. But at this point, we don't have any comparisons to, to other other entities or other areas yeah i'm not aware either of uh of how we compare it to other states um monica any anyone from bond finance no hi this is susie nelson um I hello madam chair and board uh, members um what we did compare it against is uh the delinquencies that are in the loans underlying the single family mortgage bonds. And those delinquencies run at about 76% current, 24% delinquent. So compared to um, those underlying loans, TDHCA is actually outperforming. So you're saying the ones that are directly managed by us are better than the ones that are uh, managed by the our partners. Well, yes, because we work really hard. They go through many, many um, phases to try to help these individuals and families, and uh, pretty much through to the bitter end. So I don't think many financial institutions are as um, understanding and helpful as TDHCA in this regard because of our mission. <clears throat> okay, that, just, that answers my question. Just trying to get some perspective on: is this good or bad? It's really good, actually. I was I was quite surprised, and uh, I feel that the agency has really great processes in place surrounding this um, function. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Nelson. All right, are there any other questions? Okay, hearing none, we will move on to our next report item. Um, it will be the status of the internal and external audit activities and Mr. Scott will present that for us, thank you. Yes, the, the big item coming up next year is um, on the, sing, the statewide single audit, which they do every year, but this year um, Clifton Larson Allen that does the federal compliance component of the statewide audit, they're going to be auditing the coronavirus relief fund. Um, the, the amount of money that TDHCA received for coronavirus relief caused it to be selected for review in the federal audit of the state's 2021 financial statements. They will test basic compliance supplement requirements such as eligibility, allowable costs, um, reporting, et cetera, along with any special provisions. And they'll also conduct uh, general information systems reviews. And we had our entrance conference with CLA on May 24th. Um, so that concludes my presentation and I'll be happy to answer any questions or maybe. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Are there any questions related to the report on internal and external audit activities? Okay, hearing none, we will adjourn our meeting at 8.24 a.m. and I will try to get my camera fixed before our main meeting. Thank you all very much. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.